Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Dave Bauer. If you don't know me or you weren't here or at the Convex two years ago for when I presented my original prototype, this is uh, my, what I'm working on is essentially a uh, micro ATX motherboard replacement for a Commodore 64. And I started this project a little over two years ago because I had several dead 64s laying around that had been either, you know, I couldn't diagnose why they were broken or they'd been, you know, killed by the power supply. And I thought, well, I can make a new board that can plug into a you know, modern ATX case as a you know, much better power supply than I can like, you know, gather enough chips to make working systems, you know, and have something that's a little more reliable than the original Commodore 64 motherboard. So originally my first prototype that I brought to Convex two years ago was just a standard clone of the C64 motherboard layout of the, uh, one of the cost reduced boards. Um, and um, after that, you know, I tried to look at and seeing what features I could add to it to make it a little more, you know, usable and expandable, one of which was uh, adding a USB keyboard. Um, one reason is that the original prototype has the, um, the parallel port pinout compatible keyboard interface. It's really only in, uh, compatible with the uh, 128E keyboard, which not are hard to find and not everybody has. So I, then one of the things I added to the board was a Arduino-based USB host controller that can plug in USB keyboard, USB keypad, um, or some other USB uh, joystick that you can use to, um, so you, you wouldn't have to be limited to old Commodore keyboard or uh, Commodore hardware. Um, uh, another uh, thing I added to the board was uh, an additional two uh, slots for SID chips, so you could actually run up to three SID chips on the board. Uh, another thing was adding an RS-232 interface, um, just so if, yeah, if you wanted to do any sort of a, um, you know, a modem or, or a serial interface out of it, then you could use the, the standard uh, COM software with it. And the other thing I was working on, it's not complete yet, on the second prototype, is a single chip ROM solution. So um, being able to have a 64K ROM chip where you can have multiple kernel versions, multiple versions of uh, char set if you want it as well. Um, oh, and then one other thing that this board does have is it, it has the, uh, the regular video output, but as well as the S video output as well. That's split up. The standard R, uh, RF regulator. Um, oh, and the oh, and I did add circuitry so you have a a, a soft on/off button from the PC case, so you don't have to worry about plugging and unplugging the mains to the, the uh, case to get the power to turn on and turn off. So the current progress is, I, on my second prototype board, I got it back from the fab about six weeks ago and started debugging the board, trying to bring up, get it soldered and make sure that you know, I could get things on the board up and running. But as I tried to power on with all the chips in the system, you could see it fetching code, but it was having some issue fetching you know, the proper kernel code out of the kernel ROM. So that's where it's the current state of it is. I'm trying to debug it and see if there's, I, soldered something wrong or if I got bus contention or loading issues, something like that. But, so that's the current state of where I'm getting anything like that. But hopefully if I can get the design working and get the USB software written and completed for the Arduino, then it can be ready for um, a larger production. So that's where it's at. Any questions? Do you have a timeline for any of this, Dave? Not really. As time permits, <laughs> it hasn't been. I kind of got delayed by, I wanted to have more stuff ready for Convex last year, but work got in the way. I've just been working way too much in the past year, so. Price-wise? Price-wise, um, based on the bomb cost of the PC board, I'm hoping between $150 and $200 for it. Because the, the, actually the priciest part of it is all of the, the components that go on the board itself. I'm trying to find everything. That's, that's the priciest part of it. Does your uh, new board still use uh, like original SID chips that you have to put into the sockets? 
Uh, yes. It, well, it's the SID, you know, it's the original SID chip, but it could use either version, in the the nine volt or the five volt version. Same with the big chip. The, they were um, older chip or the newer chip as well. What about uh, can you like put in like SID replacements? What's that SID replacement that they have out there? Swin SID. SID, yes. Can I, I use a Swin SID? Could. I have not tried one oh. yet on my old board though, but it should work. And uh, you have, uh, is there a way to connect a printer to the board? Uh, yes. So I do have the, the user port, it does come to a header okay. out on the board. So if uh -huh. you had, you know, some sort of uh, ribbon cable or other edge connector conversion to go out to the user port, then it will be there. Same with the cassette port as well. I've got oh. the cassette port on my, my new reviewers on the board as well. Oh, uh, that reminds me, I've got two other additions on the board. Uh, one is a an internal IEC drive connector Woo. and an internal <laughs> parallel port drive connector as well. <laughs> Just can't break. Break. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Well, yeah, IEC pinout that he's got on the board just happens to be the one for the micro drive as well. Uh, okay. So we can play right into it. Uh, um, in terms of connectivity, like, uh, I don't know, internet ca connectivity, are you able to, like, attach modems to it? Uh, yeah. So if either I've got the internal RS-232 port on it, which can go to, you know, a serial, some sort of serial-based modem, or if you did, like, uh, you know, a modem in the user port, then that would work as well. Okay. Have you had any thought to doing a version with a Super CPU built on? Is not there not yet. known about the Super <laughs> CPU? <laughs> <you're even started? laughs> not yet. Not yet. Okay. More work to do that. There are a lot of parts available, and there are schematics available. And I'm trying to buy CMD right now, okay. and so kind of negotiating a little bit. But it's, the problem is, is I like Jim Brain's been trying to do it for a while. He gave me all the contact information for those guys and Maurice, and it just, you know, they're not motivated really to do much of anything, so we'll see how it all pans out. But I like to get all the parts. They have stacks of parts and stuff still for the original CPUs, and metal mm. cases and all that stuff. So, oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. And so Jim told me about that. So I'm like, you know, these guys, like, please, please, like, part with this stuff, you know, so we can recreate it all. So if I find out, Dave, you can make a super CPU built in. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? So you have an internal user oh. port connector? Uh, it's yes. a header? It's a header for the user Okay, so port. cool. I can make, make an adapter for the Y button and plug it right inside. Right. Nice. Other questions? Anybody? Uh, can you hold up the board for us? Oh, the yeah. new board for the, us. The new board. Oh, just stay right there, Dave. I can zoom. Okay. And who does the manufacture of your board? So I source this out to a company in China. Oh, okay. To manufacture the board. And it, the turnaround time was like about a week from the time I submitted my oh. design to getting it at my doorstep. So, wow. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, how much did the company charge you to, to make a board um, like that? I did. So I did a uh, 24 by 24 panel. So I ended, up, I ended up getting four boards out of it, and it was about fifty dollars more in that okay. quantity. Oh, so that's pretty good, actually, for that big a board. Yeah. What's in the name of the, the company in China? Uh oh, I forget now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't remember. Grab a handful of silverware and throw it. That's yeah. the name. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you, Dave. Can right, off the record, Dave? How long? How long? <laughs> yeah. I've gotten his work on it uninterrupted. Yeah. <laughs> How long, wifey? <laughs> How much is it worth you? Oh. <laughs> so, you're more. Th Motherboard use uh, this trip? Well, my first uh, version of the prototype does, but for the my second one, what I did is I just told it to use a standard 64K EEPROM, which is and, and so just combine all of those into one chip. 
We have to code the address. And mux the address yeah. lines, yeah. Um, what else is not original? The SIDS, right? Uh, the SID circuitry is original, yes. So this have to be original? Yeah. All right, thank you. Cool. Okay, thanks again, Dave. <laughs> All right, Dave. <laughs>